Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Carter here at Jay Stadium in New York as the Mets and the Cubs get set for the third and concluding game of the current series that now stands at one game each. Today on the mound for the visiting Chicago Cubs will be 26-year-old right-hander Bill Hand. And pitching for the New York Mets will be 33-year-old right-hander Bob Shaw. We'll be back for the start of today's game in just one moment. Now, here's a word from Rheingold. I don't know the reason. I can't tell you why. The more people like Rheingold, the beer extra dry. But we must be doing something. Yes, we must be doing something right. Yes, we must be doing something. Yes, we must be doing something absolutely right. Positively, positively, woo, absolutely right. Here at Shea Stadium this Sunday afternoon it is a beautiful day for a baseball game, and there are plenty of seats available, so if you happen to be in the vicinity and want to attend a baseball game, come on out by all means. Now the starting lineup. First for the visiting Chicago Cubs. Leading off and playing center field is Adolfo Phillips. Batting second at second base is Glenn Becker. Playing right field and batting third is Billy Williams. And batting fourth and playing third base, Ron Santo. Batting fifth is the first baseman, Ernie Banks. Batting sixth is the left fielder, Byron Brown. Batting seventh and catching, Randy Huntley. Batting eighth and playing shortstop, Don Kessinger. Batting ninth and pitching, Bill Hand. Right now, the umpires have come out to the home plate area. Captain Ron Sando is there with the lineup cards for the Cubs, and here comes manager Wes Westrom with the Met lineup cards. The starting lineup for the Mets, leading off and playing second base, is Chuck Hiller. Batting second in right field, Al Luplo. Batting third at first base, Ed Cranville. Batting fourth is the left fielder, Larry Elliott. Batting fifth in center field, Cleon Jones. Batting sixth at third base, Ken Boyer. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, Ed Brasseau. Batting eighth is the catcher, Jerry Grody. Batting ninth and pitching, Bob Shaw. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Ryan Gold Breweries Incorporated, the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation, and the Sun Oil Company, and is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game that the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Well, last night was a big one here at Shea Stadium as more than 50,000 fans turned out for Old Timers Night as the 1950 All-Star Game was briefly recreated and the National Leaguers won it by a score of 2 to nothing. But more importantly, the fans got an opportunity to see and greet some of the great stars of the past and to see them perform briefly on the field. Then the New York Mets topped off the evening with a victory over the Chicago Cubs to assure them of finishing out this month with a better than 500 percentage and thus it becomes the first month ever that the Mets have played a full month schedule and finished with a better than 500 percentage. Right now the New York Mets 
are taking the field. Bob Shaw is out there firing down the warm-up touches. As we start play today, the Mets have won 46 games and lost 55. The Chicago Cubs have won 32 games and lost 70. They are 28 and one-half games back of the league-leading Pittsburgh Pirates. That's the 14 games out of first place, so the Mets are leading the Chicago Cubs by 14 and a half games. The Mets are closer to first place than they are to last place in the National League standing. On the field now, the Mets have Ed Trainville at first base, Chuck Hiller at second base, Ed Versu at shortstop, and Ken Boyer at third. Larry Elliott is in left field. Leon Jones is in center field, and Al Luplo is in right field. The San Francisco Giants will be coming in here tomorrow night. They will be here on Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday afternoon. We'd like to emphasize that there are good box and reserve seats available for all of those Giant games coming up starting tomorrow night. The Giants right now as of today, are in third place in the National League standings, having sustained a double loss at the hands of the Atlanta Braves yesterday. Pittsburgh Pirates are on top. The Los Angeles Dodgers are second, a game and a half out. The Giants are a game and a half out, three percentage points back of the Dodgers. St. Louis Cardinals have won six straight and are in fourth place, six games out. The Phillies are in fifth place, seven and a half games out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at Chase Stadium in New York, our national anthem. playing of the National Anthem. The Mets are on the field and the Chicago Cubs coaches come out to take their post. Whitey Lockman coming around to coach at first base and Pete Reeser on the line to third. Manager Leo DeRocher pacing in the dugout at this moment. Yesterday and last night's results in the National League. The Mets defeated the Cubs 6-3. to three. Cincinnati Reds beat the Houston Astros 5-1. to one. Philadelphia Phillies beat the Pirates 4-1. to one. The Atlanta Braves beat the Giants 6 to 5 in 11 innings in the afternoon game, 15 to 2 in the night game. The St. Louis Cardinals beat the Dodgers by a score of 3 to 1. In the American League yesterday and last night, the White Sox shut out the Yankees 6 0. The Red Sox beat Washington 8 2. Minnesota shut out the league leading Baltimore Orioles 7 0. Kansas City beat Detroit 2 to 1. California beat Cleveland 2 to 1. Starting play today in the American League. Baltimore is on top. Detroit 13 and a half games out. The California Angels are also 13 and a half games out. One percentage point back of the second place Detroit Tigers. Now Adolfo Phillips is up to lead off for the Cubs. Here's Bob Shaw's pitch and it is inside for a ball. Bob Shaw in his 11 starts as a Met has been scored on in the first inning eight times. He has allowed the opposition at least one run in the first inning in his last five starts. It has been a first inning jinx as far as Shaw has been concerned. Ball is bunted foul on the third base line and out of play. Bob Shaw says that it's all a matter of rhythm. 
and that once he has established the rhythm, which is difficult to establish for him apparently early, that uh, he can continue, and that's sort of the pattern that he has followed. Overall, Bob Shaw has won eight games and lost nine. As a Met, he has won seven games and lost five. Adolfo Phillips is hitting 267, 12 home runs and 25 runs batted in. A 1-1 pitch is hit high in the air in the left field. Larry Elliott flips the glasses, moves in, and makes, he drops the ball. And moving to second is Adolfo Phillips. Larry Elliott has the ball in his glove and dropped it. It is an error. Charles again. Left fielder Larry Elliott. It is a two-base error. And now he is out for missing first base. An appeal play is put on, and Phillips is out for missing first base. As Bob Shaw got the ball, puts it over there to Ed Cranepool, and the call is made by Al Barlick, the umpire at first. As Adolfo Phillips, thinking that the fly ball would be caught easily, did not bother to touch the bag at first. So he is out, and Glenn Beckert is up, hitting 295 with one home run and 36 runs batted in. Now the pitch is low for a ball to Beckert. One man out and nobody on base. So Adolfo Phillips was out on the appeal play at first after the ball had been dropped by Larry Elliott out in left field. Now the pitch is low for a ball. 2-0 and oh is the count to Beckert with Billy Williams waiting in the on-deck circle. The wind is ripping the flag out toward right field here this afternoon at Chase Stadium. There's one man out, there's nobody on base. Covers batting in the top half of the first inning. Now Bob Shaw's pitch, and it's in there for a called strike. Two and one. The umpires, Mel Steiner, behind the plate. Al Barlick at first, Augie Donatelli at second, and Stan Landis at third. Bob Shaw again pops and pitches. Here's a swing and a ground ball to short. Taken on a big hop by Bersu and across the crane pool, and there are two men out. Cranville, of course, gets the foot out on Adolfo Phillips, who did not reach first base officially. Billy Williams is up now, hitting 301. He has 20 home runs and 58 runs batted in. Two men out with nobody on. Ron Sando moves out to the on deck circle. Now Shaw's delivery, and it's low for a ball. Defensively, the Mets have swung around toward right, playing Billy Williams to pull. Billy Williams last year hit 34 home runs as a Chicago Cub to set a new club high for Cubs. As far as left-hand batters are concerned. Since the runner, of course, on the Phillips did not officially reach first base, there is no error charged against Larry Elliott. Here's a swing and a drive, deep to right, and it is going foul up into the mezzanine deck. The 34 home runs hit by Williams last year was an all-time mark for the Cubs as far as left-hand batters are concerned. For right-hand batters, of course, Hack Wilson holds that record. He hit 56, which is the National League record. This is a 1-1 pick. Swung on it on the ground to short. Taken there by Bersu and played across the crane pool and the side is out. The play on Adolfo Phillips went 7-4-3 if you're keeping score. On the appeal play at first, no error. It was a race because the runner never officially reached first base. Top of the first, no run. So hit and nervous, none left. Scored the end of a half inning is Cubs nothing and the Mets coming to bat. Just jazz. you enjoy your kicks and jazz, we feel certain that you get your fill on the weekly program Just Jazz, heard over WGY. The program is heard usually on Tuesdays from 8 to 11 in the evening, but during the Mets baseball season, the show is heard on other nights of the week. In any case, Just Jazz is heard one night each week. Suggestion? 
send your name and address to Just Jazz Schedule, care of WGY in Schenectady, New York. And by return mail, you'll have the listings of each of the Just Jazz programs throughout the summer. This is Randy English. Be advised, it's cool, it swings, it's for you, and it's Just Jazz, here at 810 on your radio dial. Over WGY in Schenectady. We're going now to the bottom half of the first inning, and it'll be Chuck Hiller coming up to lead off for the Nuts. Bob Shaw got by the first inning and got the side in order, actually, as Adolfo Phillips did not officially get on base after Larry Elliott dropped his pop fly and left. He was out on the field play at first, so he never did officially reach first base. And then Shaw got the next two batters short to first. Beckert and Williams both grounding out short to first. So Chuck Hiller is up now with a 324 batting average, one home run and eight runs batted in. Bill Hands is on the mound for the Chicago Cubs. He's won seven games this year and lost eight. Right-hand pitcher facing a left-hand batter. Ron Hunt is still being rested by manager Wes Westrom. Here is the pitch low for a ball. Hunt is still beset with a variety of injuries and ailments. He's able to play. However, Manager Westrom wanted him to have a couple of days rest to get set for the Giants series opening up tomorrow night because he has uh, an excellent record at the plate against the Giants. Now the pitch is low for a ball. It's 2-0 to Chuck Hiller. The Cubs on the field have Ernie Banks at first, Glenn Beckert at second, Don Kessinger at short, and Ron Sanzo at third. Byron Brown in left, Adolfo Phillips in center, and Billy Williams in right. Randy Hunley catching fastball in there for a call strike two and one to Chuck Hiller. On the coaching line, Berra at first, then Herzog at third for the Mets. Here's a fastball low inside. Bill Hands goes behind. Three balls and one strike. In the delivery, and he walks in. Uh, Chuck Hiller draws a walk to open up for the match here in the bottom half of the first inning. It'll be Al Luplo hitting 242 with three home runs and 19 runs batted in. Al Luplo. Bill Hand against the Mets has won none and lost two. That is his lifetime record against the New York Mets. Here's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. And lost to the Mets 5-1 on May the 8th and 9-3 on June the 25th. He is from Rutherford, New Jersey. Ernie Banks at first is holding against the base runner, Chuck Hiller. Down to Luplo is strike one. Hands throws over to first, but Hiller's back safely. The wind still rippling the flag pretty stiffly out toward right field. Beautiful baseball day. Here's a pitch high and away. Stay away out there. Glove by Hunley as he moved out. One and one. Ed Cranville has moved out to the on-deck circle. This will be a 1-1 pitch. Swung on at Indiana left. Byron Brown is there. And he makes the catch. Halfway on the fly ball to left, Chuck Hiller goes back to first. One man out and now he had Cranefield, the first baseman, hitting 244 with 10 home runs and 38 runs batted in. Looks in now to Randy Hunley to get a sign. First up and set. And throw over to first. Hiller is back safely. Last night, the Mets played Ed Bursu at second base. With McMillan at short. 
Now the pitch for on and foul back. It's out of play. Strike one count to Crane Poop. Elliott's waiting on deck. Hiller takes his lead. Strike one delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike two now to Ed Cranko. Joe Gibbon is scheduled to pitch tomorrow night for the Giants. The Mets, Bob Friend is scheduled to go. Hiller takes his lead, and here's the pitch. In there for a call, strike three. Fastball, cut the inside corner. Crane pool is a strikeout victim. He turns and walks back toward the dugout. And Larry Elliott coming up with two men out. Hitting 298, he has two home runs and 14 runs out of him. Right stands at the plate. Left-hand batter facing the right-hand pitcher. Hiller takes the lead at first, and the pitch to Elliott is a breaking ball down low for ball one. In the National League standing, the Mets are in ninth place, one game behind the Atlanta Braves, two games behind the Houston Astros. Now 1-0 pitch, and it is low for a ball, 2-0. Cincinnati Reds have now moved ahead of Houston in the standing. Cincinnati 6, Houston 7. Atlanta 8, the Mets 9, the Cubs 10. This will be a 2-0 delivery to Larry Elliott. Swung on and missed. Breaking bridges 2-1. Throw to the first. Hiller's back safely. Sliding in down there. Al Barlick, the umpire, stationed at first base. play such as that in which Phillips was out in the first inning, the umpire, even though aware that the runner has missed first, makes no call until there is an appeal. The field constitutes placing uh, the ball with the first baseman on the bag. Here's a pitch low, and it's three and one. And when that circumstance occurs, it is the duty of the umpire then to make a call, and Barlick was emphatic in his call about. Obviously, Adolfo Phillips figuring there would be no play on the high routine pop to left, simply just didn't touch the bag as he rounded. This will be a 3-1 delivery. Instead of throw to first, and Hillary's back safely. Larry Elliott settling himself back into the batter's box. Chuck Hillary takes his lead at first. Still hands off the stretch with a 3-1 pitch. It's low, and Elliott draws a walk. That'll move Hiller up to second. at first, Hillers at second, two men out, Cleon Jones with a five-game hitting streak is coming up now. Jones is hitting 280 for the season, five home runs and 36 runs batted in. Leo DeRocher standing up, barbering a little with his catcher, Randy Hundley. Still looking back into the dugout is Hunley, and now he turns to get to flash a sign out to Bill Hand, who had walked two batters here in the bottom half of the first inning. Now umpire Mel Steiner behind the plate takes off his nuts. He is now getting to bothering. It's DeRocher and Steiner. DeRocher from the dugout. Steiner takes off the mask. Leo is pointing out onto the field. And it has begun early here this afternoon at Shea Stadium. Well, it's obvious now that many of the remarks that Hiroshi was making to his catcher were intended for the umpire Mel Steiner. Here's a pitch, and it's outside for a ball. 1-0. and oh. A little indirect communication that quickly became direct communication. 
Chuck Hill is the runner at second for the Mets, and Larry Elliott is the runner at first. Two men out, no score in the bottom half of the first inning. Ken Boyer has moved out to the on-deck post. Hands goes to the rotten bag now. Fingers it and flips it aside. Leans forward to get a sign from Randy Huntley. Med runners lead at first and second. And the 1-0 pitch. Well, on and sliced off foul to the right side out of play. One and one now to Cleon Jones. A broad reaction to a catch made in the stand. Leon Jones settled himself carefully back into the batter's box. Batting number five in manager Wes Westrom's Met batting order here this afternoon. Runners lead at first and second. And the 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball over the top of Leon Jones' head. He ducks down to the dirt to get out of the way. And that runs the count behind at two balls and one strike. Our Mr. Al Moore of Rheingold is a picture of tutorial splendor on this summer Sunday afternoon here in connection with the salute to labor ceremony on the field just before the start of the ball game. Ably handled by our Mr. Ralph Kiner, who did admirably well to get out of bed after participating in the old timers game last night. It only took two boys and my wife to get me up. <laughs> One bottle of liniment and a few encouraging words. Two balls and one strike to count now to Cleon Jones at the plate. Med runners lead at first and second. And the 2 1 pitch. Swung on and missed to count level at 2 2. You know, Lindsay, you're an uh, expert on a story called Thunder. Uh, when did white shoes come back in? Al's got a pair of white shoes on. They're coming. He's a year ahead. They'll be here. He'll be here next year. He's a year ahead of his time or 15 years too late. I'm not sure who it is. They don't even have straight souls. <laughs> He's all set. It's what you wear on the quarter deck, I think. Runners leading now at first and second. And the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, and it's looped to second. Taken by back of the soft line drive. And he is out. The Dodgers retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. Two walks, two outs. Scores the end of an inning as the Cubs nothing and the Mets nothing. The Giants are coming in here tomorrow night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday afternoon. There are good box and reserve seats available for any or all of those games. Then the St. Louis Cardinals, who are riding the crest of a six-game winning streak, will be in here Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader Sunday. Tickets are now on sale for any of those games at a wide variety of convenient ticket locations. Here at Shea Stadium, the advanced ticket window is open seven days a week, eight to six weekdays, nine to five, Saturdays and Sundays. In Manhattan at Grand Central Station, the Met Ticket Office is at the foot of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue ramp. It's open weekdays, eight to six, Saturdays, 8.30 to four. Also in Manhattan, Macy's at 34th Street and 7th Avenue has a Met Ticket Office located on the main floor near the 7th Avenue entrance. For Long Islanders, there is a Met ticket office at Macy's in Huntington, Long Island, in the Walt Whitman Shopping Center. It's open during regular store hours. In addition, reservations for box and reserve seats may be made at all Howard Flower stores during regular store hours, also at any branch of the manufacturer's Hanover Trust Company during banking hours. Tickets may be obtained by mail by writing ticket manager, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Box seats are $3.50 each. Reserve seats $2.50 each. Add 25 cents to each order to cover mailing costs. The top of the second, Ron Sando will be up. Ralph, last night, after the ball game, talking to some of the old-timers, I uh, confirmed all of your allegations about the way right-hand batters feel about Ewell Blackwell. I was talking to Willie Jones, and Ewell Blackwell walked up, and Willie said, you know I hit 400 against Blackwell? I said, a right-hand batter hit 400 against Blackwell? He said, one hit in 400 times his bat. <laughs> Ron Santo is up there now, hitting 309. He hits the ball in the air to right. Luplo is going back. He's there in the warning track to haul it down. Well hit ball to right field off the bat of Ron Santo. One away, and Ernie Banks is coming up. He had a homer last night. He's hitting 269. He has six home runs. 
42 runs batted in. When Blackwell walked up, Willie Jones said, and he said it very emphatically, this fella should have had a league all by himself because he was a, a fella who should have been in a league all by himself. Here's a pitch in for a call strike. I know a lot of hitters, right-hand batters, that actually got very roughly to Blackwell, something they would have never done when he was in his prime. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> a strike one shot now to Ernie Banks. Now Bob Shaw with the pitch. Four on, and Ernie Banks sends it to right center. The loop blows over, and he makes the catch for the out. So there are two men out, and Byron Brown's coming up. He's playing left field today. George Altman played left in the first two games of the series. Brown's hitting 257, 13 home runs, and 39 runs by today. Byron Brown. Bringing a ground ball up the middle, and Byron Brown delivers a base hit. The first for the Cubs off Bob Shaw. He's on it first with a ground single up the middle, and catcher Randy Hundley will be coming up now. Hundley's hitting 246. He has 11 home runs and 39 runs batted in. The Giants got Randy Hundley, and the fellow who's pitching today, Bill Hans, from the Giant organization in exchange for Lindy McDaniel and Don Landrum. Bob Shaw checks the runner at first base. Now off the stretch, the pitch to Hundley, and it's in there for a called strike. You recall last week when the Metro in Houston, Larry Durker started against him and left early with a furnace in his shoulder. Durker has been placed on the disabled list by the Houston Astros. Here's the pitch outside for a ball. Ray Sadecki, the left-hander obtained by the Giants, from the Cardinals in exchange for Orlando Cepeda was used in relief in a mop-up role in Atlanta last night. In a game that the Giants lost 15-2, it was Sadecki in there in relief. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Swung on and land in the center. Cleon Jones comes in and makes the catch on the line drive to center field. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. The score at the end of an inning and a half is Cubs nothing, the Mets nothing. Yes, this is the month when we dealers worry, and you new car buyers reap the benefits in cash savings. Let's face it, we've got too many 66 Chevys, and we got to sell them. Big discounts on Caprice, Impalas, Chevy 2s, all models in every price range, with financing to fit your personal situation. Choose from more than 50 station wagons, as little as $489 down and $59.75 a month and your present car will probably more than cover the down payment. Many more 66 Chevys for even less money, but make your move now. Don't sign your name, it would be a shame, until you see your bump says man. Some months are better than others for new car buying, and this one is a real doozer at Bumstead of Troy. Unheard of discounts on the last 320 new 66 Chevys. We're going now to the bottom half of the second inning, and Ken Boyer is coming up to lead off for the New York Mets. And before he does, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. And you're listening to WGY 810 on your radio dial and WGFM Schenectady. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Tanner and Bob Murphy here at Chase Stadium in New York. Mets and the Cubs in the concluding game of a three-game set. Boyer is hitting 272. He has nine home runs and 39 runs batted in. 
Bill Hand for the fastball low, and it is ball one now to Ken Boyer. Ed Bissou waiting in the on deck circle. Breaking pitch, swung on and missed. So the count is now one and one. This is a 1-1 delivery. Swung on and fouled up to the right side and out of play. Here's a swing on a foul ball coming back. Hundley gives it a run, but this one is in the seats and out of play. Well back in the stand. Down holding one and two now to Ken Boyer. Hands looks into Randy Hundley to read the sign as the Cubs play Ken Boyer straight away. Here's a 1-2 delivery. Swung on and in the air right field and deep, but moving back to now is Billy Williams. Near the edge of the warning track, he hauls it down for the out. Boyer flying out to right, one away, and Ed Brazil is coming up. Hitting 228 with eight home runs and 34 runs batted in. Swinging the bat as he waits. Here's a pitch it on the ground to third. Sando short hops the ball, plays it across in time. For a brief moment, Sando was trying to decide whether he was going to rock back and play it on a big hop. Decided to short hop it and came up with it cleanly, played on. So there are two men out, and now it's going to be Jerry Grody. That catcher is hitting 230. He has three homers and 19 runs better than. Mets do not yet have a base hit off Bill Hand. They had two base runners in the first inning, both as the result of walks issued by Hand. Bringing a ground ball at shortstop. It's scooped up by Kessinger. He throws on the run in time. Low hit ground ball gave Kessinger plenty of time to get over and glove it and throw on the run. So, starts out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Score at the end of two is the Cubs nothing, the Mets nothing. We'd like to remind you that you can meet your favorite Met player through the Met Fan Club. And you can get information on a list of the dates available by writing to Met Fan Club, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip code 11368. Or you can pick up that very same information at any regular Met ticket outlet if it's more convenient. Some of the future dates are August 5th, Bill Murphy. September 2nd, Hawk Taylor. September 6th, Chuck Hiller. September 9th, Jack Hamilton. September 27th, Leon Jones. September 30th, Bob Shaw. And October 1st, Al Luplo. Be sure to take advantage of these dates as they will be the last one scheduled for this 1966 baseball season. For information on the list of those dates, once again, the address is Met Fan Club, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip code 11368. We're going out of the top half of the third inning. Last night at the Old Timers Dinner, Casey Stingle addressed the group. A rather lengthy address, as a matter of fact, and the subject for a good part of it was our Mr. Ralph Connor. I'm not exactly just sure what was said, but here's Ralph. Okay, Lindsay, I'm not sure either. It's the top of the third. It's a ball ballgame, and Don Kessinger coming up for the Chicago Cubs. On the mound for the Mets, Bob Shaw. Bob has given up no runs, allowed one hit. The only hit of the ball game it was by Byron Brown. And the first pitch is called a strike by Mel Steiner. It'll be Don Kessinger, Bill Hands, and then Adolfo Phillips against Shaw here in the third. Don, a switch hitter now, batting at 239. He's been tough against the Mets. Mets playing shaded toward left field. And the pitch back to the plate is a curve. Swung on a miss. It's now strike two. 
Don came into this series with 5 for 14 against the Mets. He's had seven base hits now and 18 times up against the Mets this year. The two-strike pitch is a fastball outside. Bob missed him with a spotted fastball. It's now one and two. Bob got by the first inning to pick an appeal play to do it. Dolfo Phillips was out for missing first base and the fly ball dropped by the left fielder, Larry Elliott. So no error charge and no base hit charge. Now at one two, the pitch back is an overhand curve. It swung on a miss, strike three. And Bob came right off the top with a good breaking curveball to pick up his first strikeout. That'll bring up Bill Hand. Say the Rheingold Chugga Mug is a wide mouth glass mug that holds 12 ounces of beer. And it even feels right when you pick it up. We're selling them in handy cartons of six, and they're just about the handiest fish punches in town. Bill Hand, the right hand batter with an average of all 32. He's been at bat 31 times and had one hit, and that was a two base hit. And he takes a breaking pitch outside, ball one. One base hit, drawing with one run batted in. Bill wearing number 49. And Chow back with a fastball that's over at the knees. One ball, one strike. No score in the ball game. Cubs have the only base hit that came in the second. Cubs hit the ball hard in the second inning. All four batters got good wood in the ball, but only one of them got a base hit. Top ball down to third base. A one hopper for Ken Boyer. He throws low over to first base just above the dirt part of the infield. And the catch made by Eddie Cranepool for the second out. Now we'll bring up Adolfo Phillips. Adolfo 0 for 1 with a 266 average. He has 12 home runs this year and 25 runs better than In the National League at the end of five, Philadelphia won, Pittsburgh nothing. Jim Bunning pitching for the Phillies. And now they have added three more runs against the Pirates on a three-run home run by Bill White, his 18th in the top of the sixth. So they lead by a score of four nothing, and they're still batting in the sixth. Vernon Law knocked out in the sixth inning, and Pete Mickelson is in the ball game. First pitch to Adolfo Phillips. It is butted in the air. Jerry Grody starts for third and then finds the ball. And it's too late for him to come back as the ball was off to the right side back of home plate. Jerry trying to get out on the bunt attempt in a hurry and going out actually too soon for a ball that he didn't see in time. It'll go as a strike. Little after playing a doubleheader at Pittsburgh and the Pirates now, after lo losing yesterday to the Phillies, now behind again here today. At the end of two, Houston won Cincinnati nothing. Dave Jesse against Mill Pappas. The one strike pitch, the slider fouled back over the top of the radio booth. It's strike two. That Houston Cincinnati game also a scheduled doubleheader. The Dodgers scored in the first. They lead one nothing after one. Claude Osteen pitching for the Dodgers against Steve Carlson, who was just brought up from the minors. San Francisco scheduled against Atlanta. And it will be Bob Bolin pitching for the Giants against Dick Kelly. Two strike pitches high and it's ball one. In the American League, the Yankees nothing, the White Sox nothing after one. Peterson against Harlan. That's a scheduled doubleheader. Detroit scheduled for two against Kansas City. At the end of five and a half, Boston two, Washington nothing. Bennett against Humphrey. The Digliero with a home run with a man on is 19. Baltimore scheduled against the Twins for a single game. Watt and Cott are the opposing pitchers. Next pitch is inside. Over the inside corner, a call strike three, and that retires the side. Second strikeout for Bob Shaw. He now has retired four in a row. And the score at the end of two and a half innings, the Cubs nothing, the Mets nothing. What's new? Preview. This is Earl Pudney inviting you to join us every Saturday from 1.05 to 2 p.m. for a preview. A new concept in weekend radio. Preview will feature reviews and interviews on the new books. Preview will bring you the newest releases in the Broadway shows, the world of jazz, the folk singers, and the top swingers. When you listen to Preview, you will hear about the current bestsellers. We'll be sure to keep you posted on the publishers, the prices, and keep you informed. What kind of books? We'll talk about books on medicine, science, African adventure, spacecraft and missiles, the bestsellers, 
In other words, recommended reading for your summer vacation. And we'll be talking to artists and authors, explorers and people close to the political scene. And everything will be new from the world of music. So join me every Saturday afternoon, 105 till 2, for the newest in weekend radio. Preview on WGY. It'll be Bob Shaw to lead off for the Mets here in the bottom half of the third of a scoreless ball game. Bob batting for the first time in the ball game. He has an average of 194, six hits and 31 times up. Bob will be followed by Chuck Hiller and then Al Lufthorn. On the mound for the Cubs, Bill Hans. Bill, the right-hand pitcher. Job being played straight away by the Chicago outfield. And the first pitch is in for a call strike. <laughs> and the next pitch is hard down by Ernie Banks in the right field area. Going on through, picked up by Billy Williams, and Shaw stays at first base. Hard smash that didn't come up. Ernie Banks couldn't get the glove down in time. The ball skidded on by him, and it would be scored a base hit. So the Mets have their first base hit. And a copper at the mound as Randy Huntley goes out to talk with Bill Hands, and Bob Shaw gets the light warm-up jacket. The batter coming up for the Mets, Chuck Hiller, who walked his first time up. Chuck with his walk, keeping his average at 324. He has one home run and eight runs batted in. Chuck, a left-hand batter. And now Huntley back to give the signs out to Bill Hands from behind home plate. Don't score in the ball game. Both sides with the base hit now. No one out by half of the third. Final game of this three-game series. First pitch is grounded out slowly towards second base. Bob Shaw goes on by the second baseman, so the second baseman, Glenn Beckert, has to throw to the shortstop, Don Kessinger, at second base for the fourth play, fourth play there. If he had been able to tag Bob Shaw, he might have had a double play, but Bob hustled on by him, and he had to make the throw to second base, and that took up the time. So Chuck Hiller on at first base in place of Bob, and the batter coming up is Al Luplow. Al flat out the left field his first time up. He's batting 241 with three home runs and 19 runs batted in. Al, a left-hand batter. Miller with a short lead at first base. Hands to the plate and the pitch is popped up in the air. Third baseman coming down to look as Randy Huntley, back of home plate, makes the catch. And the Cubs get their second out here in the bottom half of the third. And the Mets now will have Eddie Greenville coming up. Eddie was called out on strikes his first time up. Took a fastball through and his average at 243. Club leader in home runs with 10. He has 38 runs batted in. One behind Ken Boyer who leads the club. Eddie has had a long hard pull here of late. And this month he has did well get his average from under 200 to 243. July has been quite a month for the Mets. They have established a new mark for games one in one month, going over the 500 mark for the first time in a full month. First pitch, the crane pull is down low and it's ball one. Mets have a 17 and 14 record in July. That's a lot of ball games. With this one included, it'll be 32 for the month, and there was also an all-star break in there at three days. Mets have been at 500 one other time. They won two and lost two in October one time. Pitch back to Cranepool is low again, and it's ball two. Ball dug out of the dirt by Randy Huntley. It's two balls, no strikes. Good month for Dennis Ribbon, who was the winning pitcher last night. He won four or five decisions in July and now has won five of his last six decisions, three in a row. Throw to first base, just a calling card throw. Chuck Keller there, and he's had a short lead. Two men out, bottom half of the third, no score. Pitch back to Cranepool, in for a call strike. 
Bill Hans coming back with a slider and picking up his first strike, and the count now at two balls and one. Wayne blowing in for a change from left field on an extremely pleasant day. Now Bill Hans sets again, and his pitch to the plate is hit down toward Ernie Banks. He backhands it as he comes off the bag. He has to throw for a pitcher covering the first base to retire the side. No runs, the Mets get their first hit. There were no errors, one man left on base. And the score through three, the Cubs nothing, the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Rango. I don't know the reason. I can't tell you why. More people like Rango. The beer at the But we must be doing something. Yes, we must be doing something right. We must be doing Top of the fourth inning, the Mets and Cubs in a scoreless ball game. And for the Cubs, the leadoff batter will be Glenn Beckett, the second baseman. On the mound for the Mets, Bob Shaw. Bob has a 7-5 record since coming to the Mets from San Francisco back on June the 10th. He has defeated the Cubs in a complete game. That was on June 25th at Chicago, winning 9-3. His first pitch is a curveball called a strike. A knee-high curve over the outside corner, it's strike one. Eleven starts as a Met. Bob has been scored on in the first inning eight times. And here in today's game, he's got by the first in his 12th start. And the right-hander with a one-strike pitch. Again, the curve, and this one is just outside. Jerry Grody thought it was on the corner, so did Bob Shaw. One ball, one strike count. In tomorrow's game against the Giants, it's going to be Bob Friend, who was also acquired during the middle of the season. Bob from the Yankees, Bob Friend. He has a record of 4-1 for the Mets. Now the 1-1 pitch hits deep to center field. A line shot right there is Cleon Jones, and he makes the catch. Glenn Beckard lining out to center field. He is now 0 for 2 in the ball game. Came in with a 274 average. And that brings up Billy Williams. Mets will play the Giants a four-game series, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday afternoon. Then the Cardinals come in to close out the homestand with a four-game series starting on Friday night, a single game on Saturday, and a doubleheader on Sunday. Cardinals the hottest team in baseball right now. They're in fourth place, six games back. They have won 12 of their last 13, and six in a row. First pitch to Billy Williams, grounded down in the dirt at strike one. Billy grounded out to shortstop his first time up. His average an even 300, 20 home runs, and 58 runs batted in. Billy one of the super hitters in the National League. Left-hand batter played a shade toward right field by the Mets. One strike pitch by Shaw changed up. It's in the dirt. One ball, one strike. At the end of one, the Dodgers lead the Cardinals 1-0. Cardinals seen pitching for the Dodgers. Steve Carlson pitching for the Cardinals. 1-1 one, one delivery, foul back in the screen. So the count moves along to 1-2. and The end of 6, Philadelphia 6, Pittsburgh nothing. Giants and Atlanta have yet to get in their way. At the end of 2, Houston 1, Cincinnati nothing. Right here, a scoreless ball game. 
Now a swing and a foul again back in the screen. Now remains one ball and two strikes. One minute away in the top of the fourth. In the American League, at the end of two, the Yankees won, the White Sox nothing. At the end of five, Boston two, Washington nothing. At the end of one, Baltimore nothing, Minnesota nothing. Also on the schedule, Detroit to Kansas City and Cleveland to California. One ball, two strikes, Bob Shaw again back to Billy Williams. And again a changeup and is grounded hard down to first base. Taken by Cranepool, he now throws to Bob Shaw as he comes over to make the play. And the Mets get their second out. That'll bring up Ron Sano, who hit his first pitch to deep right field his first time up. Ron batting 308, he leads the club. And he has 23 home runs to lead the club and also 56 runs batted in. That's two behind Billy Williams, who leads the club in that department. Ron, a right-hand batter. He's still wearing a glove in his right hand and also has his right wrist to hand banning. And he has a protective helmet to cover the fractured cheekbone on the left side of his face. Bob into the double pump, and now a triple pump, and to the plate. And he tries the slider that's outside, ball one. One ball, no strike. Two men out, top of the fourth, no score. And Shaw now back again, and a slow curve, analyzing slow curve, outside, ball two. Leon Jones in center field, a deep center field, just a shade toward the left side. And the next pitch is a good slider over at the knees over the outside part of the plate. Two balls, one strike. Larry Elliott, who plays a deep outfield against just about everyone, is deep in left field straight away, and Al Lupo deep in right. Sano has a great swing and has good power. 2-1 pitch, a sidearm fastball that's swung on and fouled down in the dirt. Ball bouncing off the hands of one of the fans in the front row boxes. The guy now even out at two balls and two strikes. Good crowd in hand here today after the great crowd last night. The Mets drew 50,306 last night. And their total attendance for 43 dates, 1,151,808. Now at 2-2, the pitch of the plate is inside, and Ron Sano has to move away. A fat ball has just about got him. That fills it out at 3-2. St. Louis Cardinals went over the million mark last night. They have now become the fourth club in the National League to draw over a million people this year. 3-2 pitch, grounded out towards the third base side foul. So Sano keeps the count at three balls and two strikes. Dodgers were the first, the Astros were the second club, the Mets were the third club, and now the Cardinals, the fourth club, to go over one million fans at home in paid attendance. won't be long that Atlanta will join in. Three balls, two strikes, and the count again on the pitch hit down the right field line will remain at three and two on a foul ball. Bob Shaw tried to get a fastball by and almost did as Ron Santa was behind the pitch. But he managed to foul it off, and the count remains at three and two. Bob has struck out two, both on curveballs. He has given up one hit. It's a scoreless ball game. Now the three-two pitch again, and this one is inside ball four. And Bob has walked his first man. That will bring up Ernie Banks. Ernie with a home run last night, the runner's total up to six. He has 42 runs batted in. He's batting 268. He, too, has raised his average from a very poor start to a 
the more respectable 268. Ernie flat out to right field in this ball game in his first time up. And he swings and foul tips the first pitch is strike one. Dano is not being held on at first base. Eddie Crane ball playing behind him about three steps. Two men out top of the fourth, no score. Next pitch is grounded foul. This one on top of the dugout and it's skidded into the stands and then bounced back out. And Pete Reeser picks it up in the third base coaching box. First base coach is Whitey Lockman. Pete was managing at Dallas-Fort Worth during the early part of this year. He actually was in Japan at the very beginning of the year and went over there and didn't like the way they paid him off. He got paid in yen and he didn't like that too well because it was a lot less than they had contracted for. Next pitch is swung on and fouled off the end of the bat. Now remains at two strikes. He said the difference mounted to something like $8,000 and that's a pretty good difference. So he packed his bags and returned home. What a ball player he was. I don't believe anybody ever got a better start in baseball than Pete Reeser. He had it all. Now two strikes, a sidearm fastball, grounded back to the mound. Taking him one hop by Bob Shaw, throw the first base, retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one walk, and a man left on. And the score through three and a half innings, the Cubs nothing, the Mets nothing. There. This is Leon Kelly. That familiar theme introduces Kelly's Corner, a weekday fair that begins at 6.15. Along with blind dinner music and rare stories of the odd, strange, and curious, we have special features. When it comes to racing, we have just about all the bases covered. It begins at 6.15 with Crack Talk with Tough, behind-the-scenes views of the Trotters, Paces, and the Thoroughbreds. Mondays and Thursdays at 7.05, Bill Carpenter covers the stock car racing results from 14 tracks. This is NBC News. At 7, a summary of the news from NBC. This is Morgan Beatty bringing you NBC's News of the World. Kelly's Corner keeps you further informed at 7.30 when Morgan Beatty reports the news with on-the-scenes accounts of events from where it happens. Yes, you'll find it interesting, informative, and entertaining in Kelly's Corner, weekdays, 6.15 until 8, on WGY's Connectivity. Fourth of a scoreless ball game, the Mets against the Cubs in the final game of the three-game series. Tomorrow, the Mets take on the Giants in the four-game series. They'll be playing Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday afternoon. In that game tomorrow, it's going to be Bob Friend for the Mets. He has won four and lost one, and Joe Gibbon will be pitching for the Giants. Giants lost a doubleheader yesterday, and they have a single game at Atlanta today. First pitch to Larry Elliott has popped up in the shallow left field. Coming in is Byron Brown. He's having some trouble with the sun, but he shades it out of the way, and with his glasses down, he makes the catch. So Larry, who had walked in the 3-1 pitch his first time out, is now out for the first time officially, and it brings up Cleon Jones. Mets have had only one hit. That was by Bob Scott. Came in the third. This game a scoreless ball game. Now the batter is Cleon Jones, who hit a soft line drive to second base with runners at first and second his first time up. Both men had reached on the watch. Jones brought a five-game hitting streak into this ball game, and his average is at 280. Five home runs and 36 runs batted in. He's been tough against the Chicago Cubs this year. And Bill Hands with his second pitch of the inning. It's in for a call strike. And Cleon Jones on the pitch, decoying a bunt. <laughs> Cleon has won two games against the Cubs with home runs. They were both off of Ken Holtzman. Now he hits one hard down in the hole at shortstop. Picked up by Don Kessinger. The throw over the first base is in time for the out. Cleon out by about three steps. Ball is filled very quickly and cleanly by Don Kessinger. And we'll pause now for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.
Eight ten on your radio dial. This is WGY in Schenectady. The time is one minute before three o'clock. Ralph Kearney along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Shea Stadium. No score in the ball game. Two men away in the bottom half of the fourth. And the Mets now have Ken Boyer coming up. Ken flat out to deep right field his first time up, and he brought a five-game streak into this ball game. And he pops the first pitch foul back out of play. It's strike one. Boyer's had eight of his 39 runs batted in against the Cubs. And he hits the next pitch foul on the left field side out of play. It's strike two. Top hitters against the Cubs so far this year. Ken Boyer, Cleon Jones, and Eddie Cranepole. Cranepole has driven in ten runs against the Cubs. That leads the club in that department. Eddie with a total of 38 runs better than this year. Leon Jones has had 15 hits in 47 times up against the Cubs. Next pitch is called a ball. It's now one ball and two strikes. One and two on Ken Boyer. Ken with an average of 271, and he fouls the next pitch down in the dirt. Count stays at one ball and two strikes. Ball rolled over toward the box seat, rolling right against the ground, and then as everyone tried to reach out to get it, it hit a portion of the retaining wall and bounced straight up in the air and went right through the hands of a couple of boys. But they figured out a way to get it, and that was what the hand was for as they reached down and picked it off the ground. Slider by Bill Hans is outside, and the count at two and two. Two balls, two strikes. On deck batter, Eddie Basu. Two men away, bottom half of the fourth, no score. And Bill Hands back again. The pitch is hit high in the air to shallow center field. Coasting in the center fielder, Aldolfo Phillips. And he makes the catch, and that retires the side. No, so Bill Hands has retired his last six batters after giving up his only base hit to Bob Shaw in the third. And the score through four. The Mets nothing, the Cubs nothing. Now, once again, here's Lindsey Nelson. All right, Ralph, tomorrow night, the San Francisco Giants will be in here with Willie Mays and Juan Marichal and Willie McGovey and Gaylord Perry and Jim Ray Hart. And they will open up a four-game set against the New York Mets. It'll be left-handed Joe Gibbons starting for the Giants tomorrow night. And for the Mets, Bob Prince. There are plenty of good box and reserve seat tickets available for all four of those games, and they are now on sale. Then the St. Louis Cardinals come in on Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader on Sunday. Cardinals have been riding high of late. They have won six straight games, and right now they're only six games out of first place. As the acquisition of Orlando Cepeda and Al Jackson Gave the St. Louis Cardinals a lift that they needed. Jackson has won 11 games for them now. So those two clubs will be coming in here during the remainder of this homestand at Shea City. Four inning totals for the Cubs. No runs, one hit, no error. For the Mets, no runs, one hit, no error. Byron Brown is up to lead off. He got the base hit off Shaw. Brown single up the middle in the second inning. Breaking pitches in there for a called strike. Randy Hundley has moved out to the on-deck position now as Bob Shaw winds and fires a breaking pitch swung on and missed it strike two. Very comfortable, sunny afternoon here at Shea Stadium in New York. The last day of July, a very successful month for the New York Mets. Here's a pitch missing outside. It's one and two. Manager Wes Westerman at the start of the year set his sights ambitiously on 
70 victories for this season. So far, the Mets have won 46. This will be a 1-2 pitch. And it's in there for a call strike three. Third strike out to Shaw. Catches Byron Brown looking one away, and Randy Huntley is the batter. He's been up one time, and he lined out to center field. There's no other theater quite like the Jones Beach Marine Theater, and Guy Lombardo's new musical spectacular, Mardi Gras, is the best ever. It's great for fundraising and theater parties, so why don't you and your friends go on out to the Jones Beach Theater? Swing and a ground ball to second, taken there by Hiller and played on the crane pool. Two away. Bob Shaw, trying to get over to field the ground ball, stretched himself out in the dirt of the mound there. Two away, and Don Kessinger's the batter. Switch hitter batting left, and up one time struck out. Dodgers have scored a run at St. Louis in the top of the third on a Dick Stewart home run. So it's now the Dodgers two and the Cardinals two going to the bottom of the third. Claude Osteen against Steve Carlson. Kessinger's in and waiting. Bob Shaw pumps and pitches. And it's low for ball. Kessinger bats number eight in manager Leo DeRoche's Chicago Cub batting order. The Mets shade their defense slightly toward the left. Playing Kessinger to punch the ball to the opposite field. That pitch is low for ball. 2-0 and now to the Cubs shortstop. delivery. Swung on and hit on the ground towards second. Hiller's over. Bob was in a moment. Throws on, but not in time and on by Cranebull. Kessinger turns. Both Grody and Cranebull go for the bag, and Kessinger goes back to first. That arrow on Chuck Hiller. Both sort of ran up his arm, and he couldn't find the handle, Then when he threw it, went on by Cranebull. Charged Hiller with an arrow. With two men out. Chubbs get a base runner, and Bill Hands, the pitcher's up. Went up one time, grounded out third to first. Rainpool playing behind the runner at first. Bob Shaw off the stretch with the pitch. Swung on and missed strike one. Bill Hans has done up this year 32 times. He's had one hit. It was a double. Phillips waiting on deck. Messenger takes his lead at the first to strike one pitch. Breaking ball swung on it. Missed it. Strike two. Bob Shaw, since coming to the Mets and the Giants, has won seven games and lost five. Overall now, for the year with the Giants and Mets, he has won eight games and lost nine. This will be a two-strike delivery, sidearm breaking pitch in there for a call, strike three. Strikeout number four for Bob Shaw. No runs, no hits, one arrow, one left. The score at the end of four and a half innings. Cubs nothing, Mets nothing. Sometimes things roll easy and sometimes they don't roll at all. Either way, here's a song with a message for you. Roll on a boat. And in New York City, more people roll on easy with Rheingold Extra Dry than with any other beer. Maybe they like our natural carbonation, but whatever it is, we must be doing something right. We 
We're going to the bottom half of the fifth inning now, and it'll be Ed Bursu coming up. He's been up one time, and he grounded out third to first. Bill Hand has allowed only one base hit. It was a ground ball hit by Bob Shaw down toward first and took a bad hop on Ernie Banks and went on by and was scored as a base hit. And that's the only base hit the Mets have in this game. Hands has struck out one and he's walked two. He issued two walks in the first inning. Now he turns to get a time from Huntley to work for the right-hand batter. And the pitch is swung on and missed for strike one. That's the schedule to send up Bursue, Grody, and Shaw here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. A game that is scoreless to this point. The fans are coming to life here now trying to get something started on behalf of the Mets. Here's a pitch outside. One and one, they count. Bursu just outside the batting box, now moves back in. One one offering. This is low and away. So now half goes behind two and one. Defensively, the Cubs are playing Bursu straight away. West Westrom calls Jerry Grody back over to say something again. Here's a swing and a miss. Two and two to pursue. Grody's on deck, and Westrom is talking to him uh, on the steps of the Met dugout. Now Grody comes back out to the on-deck circle. Here's a 2-2 two -two pitch to pursue. Low and away. So the count runs out full now at 3-2. This is a payoff pitch. It's low, and Bersu draws a walk, a leadoff walk here in the fifth inning. The third base on balls issued by Bill Hand. Here's the Mets to base runner and brings up Grody. Set up one time and grounded out towards the first. Doing a little calisthenics out there on the mound before getting ready to work to the right hand batter. Ernie Banks holds against the runner at first base. The two takes his lead there, the pitch, and it is high as Grody ran the hand on the bat in the bunning position and asked that umpire Mel Stein examine the ball. He does, and he throws it out. Apparently, Grody thought he saw a dark spot or some disfiguration out the ball. He looks down out of the sign man. Whitey hears I can steer it. He's running through the side front. Apparently the sacrifice was on in the first pitch. And now the Cubs call time. We short stop down Kessinger. Coming over to have a word with Bill Hand. Santor is even with the edge of the grass at third in anticipation of a possible bun attempt. No score in the game and the bottom half of the fifth inning. Two leads, hand pitches. Grody bunts the ball foul up the first base line and out of play. Down is one ball and one strike. Ernie Banks was charging in from his post at first. Glenn Beckett was coming over from second to cover the bag. Kessinger had taken the bag at second. Pitcher Bill Hands was coming off to field a possible bunt. Here's a pitch, and it is bunted on and fouled off. Strike two. Right down to the dirt. So it's one and two now to Grody. Pitcher Bob Shaw is on deck. Let's see if Westrom has Grody bunting all the way, or if he allows him to swing away now with a count of one and two. The bugaboo for a manager or anybody else in a circumstance like this is the possibility of the double play. One-two pitch. 
And it misses low and away. He was not bunting. He was ready to swing away. It's two and two. Ed Bissou bluffs the start on the pitch. Now, if you switch off and play hit and run on a 2-2 pitch, of course, the bugaboo is the strikeout double play. Bissou takes his lead. He bluffs the start. A swing and a miss. And a strikeout is credited to hands. His second. One away. Bissou holding it first. Bob Shaw coming up. Shaw's been up one time and had a base hit. He's getting a hand here. Shaw was born in the Bronx and grew up in Garden City, Long Island. His father was a prominent New York high school coach. Now Shaw bunts the ball up into the air and it's taken by the pitcher Bill Hansbrough through his back safely, covering up in case there is a throw from behind his back there. Shaw was going to try to pop that ball over the head of Ernie Banks charging in and instead he popped it up so that it could be played by either Banks or pitcher Bill Hans and took it. So there are two men out and Chuck Hiller is about it. Hiller is nothing for one and a walk, left hand batter. Hitting 322 for the season. The Cubs have one hit, the Mets have one hit. Here's a pitch from online in the left center field. That's the base hit for two. Is on his way to third. It's taken out there and still in bottom of by Dolfo Phillips. For two is coming home. And Sando gets the ball to relay. He is safe at the plate. For two scores underneath the tag of Randy Hundley as Ron Sando took the ball in the center of the diamond and fired it on to Randy Hundley. But not in time to get for two, who got a green light from Coach Whitey Herzog at third and has scored the first run of the ball game. It is scored as a double and a run batted in for Chuck Hiller. It was an in-betweener, left center. Adolfo Phillips got over to cut it off, but bobbled it on the first grab, had to go for it the second time. Then when he played it in, it was cut off by Sanzo and played to Huntley, and he is getting attention from the trainer at the moment to see if he has sustained any sort of an injury. As the two came sliding in at the plate. So the Mets are out in front here at the bottom half of the fifth inning by a score of one to nothing. They have Chuck Hiller at second and Al Luplo at the plate. Luplo has slid to left and fouled out to the catcher so far. Produced a net run here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Only two hits off hands in the ball game, but the Cubs have only one off Shaw. Now the pitch and it's low for a ball, one and one. Killer takes his lead at second. Hands off the stretch with a 1 1 delivery. Swung on and on the ground to first, and it's off the ground of Ernie Banks. He's done with play, placed the hands in time. Ruplow grounds out, first face to the pitcher covering. It was off the glove of Ernie Banks as he moved over toward the line, but he scrambled out and recovered and played it then to the pitcher Bill Hans covering to get Ruplow. But the Mets got a run on a walk and a hit. No errors and one left. 
score at the end of five is the Mets one and the Cubs nothing. As you know, the official Met yearbook is revised from time to time during the course of the season so that it may be brought up to date. And the second revised edition is now available. It's available here at the concession stand at Chase Stadium or at any regular Met ticket outlet. And you can also get the yearbook by mail if you'd like to get it that way. Spend 65 cents. The Met yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Zip code 11368. The revised edition contains information on Bob Shaw, who's pitching today. Bob Friends, Jerry Arrigo. You can check on the entire professional career of any of the New York Mets. And in addition, there are loads of pictures and feature articles. So if you'd like a copy by mail, spend 65 cents. That's 50 cents for the yearbook and 15 cents for Hanley. The Met Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, zip code 11368. Here in the top half of the sixth inning, it's going to be top of the batting order, Adolfo Phillips up to lead off for the Cubs. He is a right-hand batter. Right-hand pitcher Bob Shaw started, has been an all-the-way in this game for the Mets. First pitch is swung on and hit in the air to short left. It's going to be a long run for Elliott. Bersu's going out, and Bersu makes the catch. Shortstop, Ed Bersu going into left field and over near the line to haul that one down. It's doubtful that Elliott would have been able to make the catch. Ken Becker coming up, grounded out and lined out center. Going to the bottom half of the eighth inning, the Phillies are leading the Pirates seven to nothing. Jim Bunny against Vernon Law, Mickelson in the sixth, Cardwell in the seventh. Bill White had his 18th home of the season in the sixth inning with two men on. Pirates starting the day on top of the National League by a game and a half. Here's a fly ball on the right. Luplo moves over. He makes the catch. So Becker flies to right, and that brings up Billy Williams. Nothing for two. They're playing a doubleheader, by the way, in Pittsburgh today. The end of five innings, the Houston Astros two, the Cincinnati Reds nothing. Dave Justy against Mill Pappas. That's the first of two also. The end of four innings now, the Cardinals have gone back ahead of the Dodgers three to two. Osteen against Carvin. Dick Stewart had a Dodger home in the third with nobody on. The end of two innings, the Giants nothing, the Atlanta Braves nothing. Bob Bolin against Dick Shelley. Right here, the Cubs are batting in the top of the sixth. Two men out, nobody on base. Bob Shaw pitched to Billy Williams, bounces in the dirt and on by for a ball. A doubleheader at Sox Park in Chicago. The first game has gone through four innings. The Yankees won, the White Sox nothing. Chris Peterson against Joel Harlan. Detroit at Kansas City in a doubleheader. Latest start. Boston at Washington going to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Red Sox five, the center is two. Then it's been relieved by Don McMahon in the sixth. Jim Hannon started Bob Humphreys. Dick Lyons, Ronnie Klein. Tony Conigliaro and Frank Howard have had home runs. Pitch to Williams is high and away. And at the end of three and a half, the league-leading Baltimore Orioles won the Minnesota Twins nothing. Eddie Watt against Jim Cox. Cleveland at California against the Angels in a latest start. Right here, the Mets are leading the Cubs by a score of one to nothing. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. Bob Shaw pumps and pitches to the left-hand batter. Breaking pitch just inside, and it's 3-0 now to Billy Williams. Shaw has struck out four and walked one in this game. He issued a base on boss to Ron Santo in the fourth inning. This is a 3-0 offering. Outside, and Williams draws the base on ball. So the Cubs pick up a base runner here in the top of the sixth with two away, and Ron Santos is now the batter. He is nothing but one in the walk. He flies out to right field in the second inning. Cranville comes over to hold against the runner, Billy Williams. He has excellent speed. Pitch to Santo is 
high for a ball, and Shaw has his hands on his hips, thinking he'd get a call on that one. And he is still having a word to say. Tom Parmel standing behind the plate. Two men out with the Cubs batting in the top half of the sixth. Williams leads it first. The 1 0 pitch is a breaking ball in there for a tall strike. It's 1 and 1. Ernie Banks is waiting on deck. Bob Shaw up and set. Delivers 1 1. Misses low and away, and he goes behind out of Santo. Two balls and one strike. Shaw goes over to the rosin bag. Looks in for the side and catches Jerry Grody. Has it now. Williams leads it first. 2 1 pitch sidearm, and it's in there for a call. Strike two. Two and two, the count. To Ron Santo. Shaw again reads the sign. Santo swings about as he waits. Shaw isn't sure. He looks in now. Read the sign again. This will be a 2-2 delivery. Sidearm. And swung on. Land into center field. Leon Jones coming on. Can't get it. He one hops it. On the way to third is Billy Williams. No play on him. He pulls up safely. Santos on at first with a line single into center field. And the Cubs now have run it at first and third with two men out. And Ernie Banks coming up. He is lined to right and grounded out pitcher to first. veteran major league performer who won the most valuable player award in the National League in consecutive seasons. Now the pitch is swung on and missed for strike one. Mets are leading one nothing, but the Cubs are threatening here in the top of the sixth. With two men out, they have runners first and third. Santo at first, Williams at third. Brown has moved out on deck. Strike one pitch now. The bank misses low and away. The count is one and one. Shaw going into the rise and back. Toes the rubber, looks in. Brown has moved out on deck. Strike one pitch now. The bank misses low and away. The count is one and one. Shaw going into the rosin bag. Toes the rubber, looks in. He's up and set. Runners lead first and third. And the one one pitch. Swung on it on the ground towards second. Hiller gets a big hop. Lace the crane, pulling the side is out. 
Cubs get no runs. They had a hit and a walk, no errors, and two left. The score at the end of five and a half is. The Mets won. The Cubs nothing. This is WGY News. This is the sound that means news, up to the minute, concise and complete. From the facilities of NBC, Associated Press, United Press International, the United States Weather Bureau, a staff of stringers throughout a 26 county area, and a newsroom staff of experienced news people, WGY keeps you informed of the latest happenings. More than 20 times a day in regularly scheduled newscasts from 6 in the morning to midnight, WGY brings you the latest news from around the world, around the area, and across the street. And when something newsworthy happens, you get it in bulletin form when it happens. All this, plus specialized programs on farm news, sports, weather, and business, make WGY's news department your best information center for what's going on in the world today. in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Left-hand batter facing right-hand pitcher Bill Hand. Swung on it in the air to center field. And Alfo Phillips hangs there and now retreats. He's there and makes the catch and gets out of the way of the ball. He lost it in the side and Crane pulls rounding second. On his way to third and he pulls up safely there. Just as he was ready to haul it in and making the catch, Adolfo Phillips ducked out of the way. He lost it in the sun. It is a triple for Ed Cranville. As Phillips lost the ball in the sun, ducked out of the way, and the Mets have a runner at third on the three base hit. So it is now Larry Elliott coming up with a runner at third base and nobody out. And the Cubs have to play it in, field in. It appeared to be a routine catch for Phillips. First, he stayed right where he was, then retreated about a half dozen steps and stopped. Appeared ready to gather the ball in and at the last possible second, ducked out of the way. Now the pitch to Elliott. Swung on, hit on the ground to the right side. Banks looks the runner, holds, and tags Elliott out on the base pad. No advance by Cranepool at third base. So on the ball, top down towards first, Elliott is out. Leon Jones is the batter. One away. Leon has lined out to second and grounded out short to first so far. Brought a five-game hitting streak into this afternoon's game. Enfield still in for the Chicago Cubs here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Jones settling himself into the batter's box. That's a hopeful of getting at least a sacrifice fly to get Cranepool in from third base. That's your leading one to nothing in the game. Still hands with a pitch that's high and tight. It's ball one. Jen Boyer is waiting on deck. Bill Hand, waiting until Hundley gets into position behind the plate. Now reads the sign, throws the rubber, works straight away, a 1-0 pitch, and it's low and away. Two balls and no strikes now to Cleon Jones. Eddie Cranepool at third with one man out. Time called, and umpire Mel Sanders is going to examine the ball. He takes that one out of play. Only walks the ball halfway to the mound and then fires it on out to Bill Hand. He started. He's been in all the way. Hey, 
Now hands reads the sign of Randy Hunley. And the pitch. Swung on it on the ground up the middle. It is going through for a base hit. Trainful comes on to score. Leon Jones is on it first with a ground single up the middle on the drawn in infield. Kessinger moved to his left to try to feel it, couldn't get to it. The Mets lead 2 0. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WGY, a 10 on your dial is connected to your station for all the Mets games. The time is 3.32. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Schneider here at Shea Stadium in New York. Leon Jones with a base hit and a run batted in. Keeps his consecutive game hitting streak alive at six straight games. Boy, has nothing for two. He brought a five-game hitting streak into this contest as well. Banks holds against the runner at first. There's one man out for the Mets. Jones is running. Hit and run. Loop to right field. A long run for Billy Williams, but he'll get there with his speed. He makes the catch. Hustling back to first is Leon Jones. That's played hit and run, and Boyer pops out to Billy Williams in short right. Now Ed Bursu is the batter. Rounded out, walked, and later scored the first run of the game, sliding in underneath the tag of Randy Hundley in the fifth inning. Two away with Jones at first. Leon Jones takes his lead at first. And the pitch is high for a ball. Pursue again looking down to Whitey Herzog at third to see if there's anything on here. Two men out. Mets have two runs on four hits. The Cubs have no runs. They have two hits. Pitch and it's outside. Two and zero. Oh. Leon Jones bluffing a start at first base on the pitch. Get off the stretch, Bill Hand. And the runner goes. Here's the pitch in for a strike. Throw to second, and Cleon steals it. Throw is high, and it is Cleon Jones with a stolen base. His first steal since June 7th. Jones now with nine stolen bases. This is a 2-1 pitch now to Ed Bursu with two men out. He watches low and... Bill Hands goes behind, three balls and one strike. Runner leads at second, 3-1 pitch to pursue, and it is low ball four. He draws a walk. Second walk he's drawn today. Hands has walked a total of four. Jerry Grody's coming up. Runners at first and second. He is grounded out and struck out. Tried to sacrifice on two pitches last time up and then struck out. There is no action in the Cub bullpen. Jerry Grody. With the Mets leading 2 nothing here in the bottom half of the six. Runners at first and second. Now the pitch to the right-hand batter. In there for a call strike. Bob Shaw has moved out to the on-deck circle. Cleon Jones is at second and Ed Bursu is at first for the New York Mets. Again, Bill Hands reads the sign, checks the runners, and delivers a strike one pitch that is low for a ball. It's one and one.
Tomorrow night, the San Francisco Giants will be here. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday afternoon for the Giants. Now, 1-1 one, one offering. It's high for a ball. 2-1. Cubs have swung the defense around toward left, playing Grody to pull. Hands is up and set. 2-1 delivery with the runner going, and there's a swing and a miss to throw to second, and nobody covering there. It's a double steal. As Cleon Jones got a good jump, was off and winging, and then Ed Versu took off. Hundley decided to try for a pursue, but second baseman Glenn Beckert was still several steps from the bag, and so it is a double steal. Second stolen base for pursue, the tenth, of course, for Cleon Jones. Now first base is open, and pursue is going to be intentionally walked. Or rather, Grody is going to be intentionally walked. Grody goes down to first with an intentional pass to get to Bob Shaw, the pitcher, who comes up now with the bases loaded. That's five walks issued by Bill Hatt, one of them intentionally. The hand is for Bob Shaw, who got the first met hit in the bottom of the third, a ground ball off the glove of Ernie Banks at first. Tried, tried to sacrifice the fifth and popped up to the pitcher. He calls down and backs out until a plane gets by. Not called because of aircraft. He must be intending to hit it a long way. Now the pitch. And it's in there for a call strike. The bases are loaded with two men out, and the Mets are leading by a score of two to nothing. Bill Hands working straight away. That pitch is high and away. One and one. Leon Jones is the runner at third, Ed Pursue is the runner at second, and Jerry Grody is the runner at first. Chuck Hiller has moved out to the on-deck position. Now Randy Huntley behind the plate goes under his crotch to flash the sign out to Bill Hand. Now, Cleon Jones loves to start, and the pitch is in for a called strike. As Bob Shaw backed away, Cleon Jones came down about halfway, bluffing a steal of home. Shaw is backing away, and he is arguing the call with umpire Mel Steiner. Steiner indicating it was in the strike zone. Shaw didn't think it was. So it's one ball and two strikes out of Bob Shaw. Look for all the world as though Cleon were coming till he slammed on the brakes down there about halfway. They're loaded up now. Two men on the count of one, two. The pitch to Shaw. Swung on it on the ground towards second. And Kessinger steps on the bag for the out. Kessinger just took the ball in his glove and stepping on the bag in the same motion for the fourth on Grody, six unassisted. And the side is out. But the Mets picked up a run on two hits. There were two walks, no errors. Three stolen bases and three left. And the score at the end of six full innings is the Mets two and the Cubs nothing. Some months are better than others for new car buying, and this one is a real doozer at Bumstead of Troy. Unheard of discounts on the last 320 new 66 Chevys. Yes, this is the month when we dealers worry, and you new car buyers reap the benefits in cash savings. Let's face it, we've got too many 66 Chevys, and we got to sell them. Big discounts on Caprice, Impalas, Chevy 2s, all models in every price range, with financing to fit your personal situation. Choose from more than 50 station wagons, 
as little as $489 down and $59.75 a month. And your present car will probably more than cover the down payment. Many more 66 Chevys for even less money. But make your move now. Don't sign your name. It would be a shame until you see your Bombstead man. In the seventh inning, Byron Brown, the left fielder, leads off for Chicago against right-hander Bob Shaw. New York, two runs, four hits, and one error. Chicago, no runs, two hits, no errors. Byron Brown has singled a center and taken a call third strike. He has one of the two hits given up by Shaw. Off the outside corner, one ball and no strike. This is the rubber game of the three-game series. Chicago won the opener Friday night. The Mets won last night. Foul ball back into the screen. One ball, one strike on Husky Byron Brown. Brown has good power. He's hit 13 home runs and knocked 39 runs in. A 1-1 delivery. Low outside on a curve. Two balls and a strike. Last year, the middle of the Cub batting order, all three men, Billy Williams, Ron Sano, and Ernie Banks drove in over 100 runs each. And it's on the outside corner for a strike two and two. This year it again appears that Billy Williams and Ron Sano have a great chance to drive in at least 100. Ernie Banks would have to have a very strong finish to do it. Now the pitch on the way. Ground ball bounced toward the hole. It's short. Cut off by Boyer. The throw to first, and he got him. Kenny cutting over in front of Eddie Bursu to field that one on the edge of the carpet and toss out his man. One man away. Here's Randy Hundley, the catcher. Say, so now's a good time to light up a cool and taste the most refreshing coolness you can get. Cool Filter King. Newest member of the Cub Mound staff has started to get ready. Randy Hundley looks it over and it's under the knees. One ball and no strike. They have a real baseball head scratcher on the message board in the form of today's baseball quiz. Do you know what X Met shares the National League record for most times hit by a pitcher in one inning? Outside and low, two balls and no strikes. He used to stand right on top of the plate. Bob Shaw behind on Randy Hundley, two balls and no strikes. We're in the seventh inning. The Mets in front, 2 nothing. Now the wind-up pitch to Hundley. A high foul ball. Whacked back over toward the crowd and out of play. Wes Westrom has his pitching rotation all set for the Giants series. Bob Friend, 4-1 and one with the Mets, will open the series tomorrow night. Jerry Arrigo pitches Tuesday night. Jack Fisher Wednesday night and Dennis Rybat on Thursday. Way inside the letters, and now it's three and one on Randy Hundley. The single game at D.C. Stadium in Washington is over. The Red Sox defeating Washington five to two by scoring three in the eighth inning to break a deadlock. Don McMahon, the winner and relief of Dennis Bennett. 
Foul ball, twisting back upstairs, no play. Dick Lyons was the loser in relief. Jim Hannon had started. Home runs in the game by Tony Canigliaro of the Red Sox is 19. Big Frank Howard for Washington, his 12th of the year. Final, Boston 5, Washington 2. Here's the payoff delivery now on Randy Hundley. And it's a pop-up that might be playable, racing hard toward the dugout of Skin Boyer. And 31 hands it. Boy, he's amazing on those pop fouls. One hand catch by Jerry Grody. Boyer raced over there, Grody raced over. At the last moment, the ball would have landed on about the first step into the dugout. But Grody somehow lunged out and made a one hand catch. He is just about as good on those pop fouls as anybody you'll ever see. He has made some Shocking plays, as Casey Stengel would say, around the dugout to the National League. He pulled one off in St. Louis on the, line, on the road not too long ago that was amazing. Don Kessinger is the hitter, and the pitch is over. Strike one call. Final score in the first game at Pittsburgh. Jim Bunning scattering 11 hits as the Phillies beat the Pirates 8-1. Bunning winning his 11th game. Vern Law was the loser. Bill White put the game out of reach with a three-run homer in the sixth inning. So the National League race is tightening up still more. Curve ball hit on the ground down the first baseline foul. Philadelphia beat Pittsburgh last night, and they have taken the first game of a doubleheader today. That moves the Phillies at the moment within six and a half games of first place. It means at the moment the Cardinals are five and a half games out. Two strike delivery, low inside, one and two on switch hitter Don Kessinger. Now Sean nods in agreement with his battery mate, Jerry Grody. Pitching one and two. A chopper off the plate foul coming right straight back. No play. One ball and two strikes. Mets two, Cubs nothing. Top of the seventh. Jaw winding, the one-two pitch. Fastball inside, moves him away from the plate. So the count is even on Don Kessinger at two and two. Bill Hands, who has pitched a strong game in his own right, is the on-deck batter. However, as he kneels to the on-deck circle, left-hander Arnold Early is warming up in the bullpen. Pitching two and two. Curve reached for a foul down the left field line and over into the crowd. Mets scored their first run on a walk to Eddie Bursu and a run-scoring double by Chuck Hiller. Now the 2-2 delivery. Ground ball hits slowly toward the middle. Bursu can't run it down. It has eyes and goes through for a base hit to center field. Now let's see how the Cubs will play it. Bill Hands is now being called back to the dugout. That single to center by Kessinger, his sixth base hit of the series. is only the third hit in the game off Shaw, and now George Altman is coming out to bat for Bill Hans.
Arnold Early on call of the Chicago bullpen. This will be his first appearance with the Cubs. He had been working as a relief specialist with Tacoma and the Pacific Coast Lakes, where he had won three and lost three and saved five. Bill Hands pitched very well. He allowed two runs, four base hits. The second run scored by the Mets, they got a break. When a fly ball hit by a crane pool, the deep center was lost in the sun for a three base hit. On the outside corner, strike one call. Big George Altman, batting 226, left hand hitter. Two men away, Don Kessinger on first base. Now the pitch on the way. It's hit foul up into the air and back over towards the crowd behind third. So now Shaw has a two strike count on George Altman. Big George, his first three years in the National League with the Cubs, was one of the top hitters in the circuit. He fouls it off. Count stays, strike two. Altman had two seasons with Chicago in which he hit over 300. Now Shaw eyes his runner, the pitch to Altman. Just missed the outside corner, one ball and two strikes. We're going to get warm-up action now for the first time in the New York Mets bullpen. Today's game, a tight pitching duel between Bob Shaw and rookie right-hander Bill Hamm. Game rocked along scoreless until the Mets got a run in the last of the fifth inning on a walk and a double by Hiller. Pitching one and two. And the curve is low, it's two and two. Kessinger, a very fast runner, is on first base with two men down. Two-two delivery. Ground ball bounced towards second. A big hop grabbed by Hiller. He throws to pursue, and they force Kessinger for the third out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Seventh inning stretch time at the end of six and a half innings. The New York Mets two, and the Chicago Cubs nothing. Tired of the same old routine? Tired of opening up the same brown bag or lunchbox and facing the same sandwiches? Then it's time to make the Neba break. Join the in crowd at your nearest Neba sandwich drive-in. Swing by and get one of those extra luscious Nebas. Neba sandwiches are made of slice after slice of tender, perfectly cooked top sirloin stacked in a toasted sesame roll. Top it off with your favorite beverage. Take the Neba break at your nearest Mike's Neba sandwich drive-in. Who's on top in the world of sports? You are if you keep tuned to WGY 810 on your radio dial on top of the latest sports news all the time. For all over sports results, tune in Sports Spotlight at 5.45 daily. WGY also brings you the complete schedule of the New York Mets, the World Series, collegiate football with Syracuse University, and pro football with the New York Giants. Get the most out of sports by listening to WGY. In the pitch now for the Chicago Cubs, veteran softball, Arnold Early. Arnold Early, 33-year-old left-hander, making his first appearance now for Chicago. Arnold was with the Red Sox the last year and a half. 
Cubs acquired Arnold Early, and he had been pitching for their Tacoma Farm Club in the Pacific Coast League. Chuck Hiller will be leading off against the Cubs Southpaw as we go now to the last of the seventh inning. Bill Hands in six innings allowed two runs, just four hits. Walked five and struck out two. Both runs scored by New York are classified as earned runs. However, the second run that scored in the sixth inning, the Mets got a break. When Cranesville's fly ball to deep center was lost to the sun by Adolfo Phillips for a triple. Eddie then came in to score. On the single through the middle by Cleon Jones with the infield drawn in. So now we are set to go on the last of the seventh inning with Arnold Early, left-hander, on and relief for Chicago. Leo DeRocher wanting Early in the game in this spot as the Mets have four straight left-hand hitters coming up. Fastball is high, ball wide. Now the pitch to Hiller, he goes after it and fouls it off. Back into the crowd, one ball, one strike. We'll bring you right up to date on all the scores of the other games at the end of the inning. The 1-1 one -one pitch, inside and high, he really had the mustard on that pitch. Early can throw hard. Arnold has had a lot of experience at the top minor league level and about a year and a half in the major leagues. The 2-1 delivery, a swing and a miss on a fastball, it's 2-2. Two two. Chicago released the veteran left-hander Billy Hepp to make room on their roster and pitching staff for Arnold Early. The 2-2 delivery, a swing and a miss, he struck him out. Early fans, Chuck Hiller. Prior to striking out, Chuck had reached on a walk, reached on a fielder's choice, and doubled home at Bursu. Right fielder, Al, Al Luplo. Al Luplo has slid to left, fouled out to Randy Hundley, the catcher, and bounced out to first, nothing for three. Now the pitch on the way, and the curve is low. One ball and no strike. Off the outside corner at the knees, two balls and no strike. waiting to head back. Now Early goes behind 3-0 and on Al Luplo. Now the pitch on the way and the fastball is inside. Ball four and Luplo goes to first. If the Mets can win this ball game and take the rubber game of the series, the Mets then will have won 12 out of their last 16 ball games. They will close out the month of July with a record of 18 and 14. The dog days of July and August in baseball are when the teams with less talent usually fade. The Mets in the month of July have had the best baseball month of their four and a half year history. Pitch to Cranebull. He held up on the swing in time, and it was outside, ball one. Now a strike on the scoreboard. We'll wait to check on Mel Steiner. 
It was not a strike. He held up in time. It's one ball and no strike. New York, two runs, four hits and one error. Chicago, no runs, three hits, no errors. Bottom half of the seventh inning. One out and one on as Arnold Early checks the runner. Pitched by the left-hander. is under the knees. Two balls and no strikes. Banks holding against the base runner, Al Luplo. And the fastball gets the inside corner for a strike, two and one. Larry Elliott, also a left-hand hitter, is waiting on deck. The runner goes, hit and run play, and a foul pop-up over by the tarp down the third baseline. It's out of play. Ron Fano trailing it back, but it's over into the crowd. So the runner, Al Luplo, heads back to first base. The count is two and two on Eddie Cranepool. throws the pitching slap. Pitch to Cranepool, a drive in the air, well hit the center, cutting over is Phillips, and he rolls over and comes up with it. Adolfo Phillips lunged forward, caught the ball, somersaulted, held on to it, and came up with a catch. Ball fooled Adolfo. It was a sinking line drive that was slicing. A tough ball to handle. Now there are two men away, and the hitter is Larry Elliott. Larry has reached on a walk, fly to short left, and ground it out to first. Nothing for two. Curve over, strike one call. Now the pitch to Elliott breaks away from the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Down in the dirt, handled by Randy Hunley. Two balls and a strike. Arnold Early is a resident of Lincoln Park, Michigan. He actually has credit for six years of the major leagues. We said only about a year and a half. He's had six years. He first came up to the Red Sox in 1961. Now the 2 1 delivery. Fastball, the tie, 3 and 1. He came up briefly in 1960. He was in only two games. Then spent half of the 61 season with Boston and the next four seasons. Three one delivery way inside and he powdered that fastball but missed the strike zone and the Mets have two men on. Luplo moves to second. Elliott down to first and now Cleon Jones comes up. Interestingly enough, Arnold Early was in 57 ball games last year and figured in only one decision. While we have a conference at the mound, let's pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. At 810 on your dial, this is your New York Mets station in the great northeast, WGY Schenectady.
Bob Murphy with Ralph Kainer and Lindsey Nelson from Shea Stadium. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Mets have now received seven walks in this game. Starting pitcher Bill Hands walked five. Arnold Early has now walked two. Ground ball hit by Cleon, trickling foul down the third base line. Ferguson Jenkins on call now in the Chicago Cup bullpen. checks the runners at first and second. And Cleon hits a high fly to left center field. It's fairly deep. Back goes Brown, and Brown makes the catch on the warning track in left center. The wind held that one up. The wind is blowing in now from the center field toward home plate. Whether it would have gone out or not without any wind, I don't know, but it certainly would have been close. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two left on. Mets have had nine left on base over the first seven. At the end of seven innings, the New York Mets two and the Chicago Cubs nothing. In the National League, in the first game of a doubleheader at Forbes Field, Jim Bunning went the route. Philadelphia beat Pittsburgh eight to one. Bunning winning his 11th. Law was the loser. Bill White had a three-run homer. For Bill White, his 18th home run of the year. The warm-up pitchers for the second game in Pittsburgh, Bob Buell for Philadelphia, he's 5-5. Five and five. Steve Blass for the Pirates, 8-5 and five on the year. Houston, 3, Cincinnati, nothing at the end of 7.5. Dave Justy for the Astros, they're trying to snap a seven-game losing streak. Jack Balshin has relieved Milt Pappas in the eighth inning, and that is the first game of a doubleheader. The St. Louis Cardinals riding a six-game win streak and they won 12 out of their last 13. The Cardinals lead the Dodgers four to three after six and a half. Ron Fache is in relief of Steve Carlton. Osteen, Miller, and now Peronofsky for the Dodgers. The game's only a home run by Stewart with nobody on. Giants two and the Braves nothing after three and a half. Bob Bolin pitching against the Braves, Dick Kelly. The White Sox behind the pitching of Joe Horland lead the Yankees four to one going to the eighth inning. Whitey Ford is in relief of Chris Peterson. And that is the first game of a doubleheader. Kansas City won Detroit nothing after two and a half. Mon Bouquet against Jim Nash, the opener of a twin bill. In a single game, the Red Sox scoring three in the eighth inning beat Washington five to two. McMahon the winner in relief of Bennett. Lyons the loser in relief of Hannon. Now a swing and a miss as we go to the eighth inning with Adolfo Phillips leading off. Boston-Washington game, Tony Canigliaro and Big Frank Howard had home run. Baltimore three, Minnesota nothing after six and a half. Eddie Watt pitching for the Orioles and Jim Cott for the Twins. Cleveland and California, it'll be Steve Hargan against Fred Newman. Here's the windup by Shaw and the fastball is over, strike call. So Bob Shaw has a two-strike count on leadoff batter Adolfo Phillips. Today's crowd at Shea Stadium, 21,877. Curve outside, one ball and two strikes. Now Wes Westrom has his late inning specialist. Jack Hamilton and Rob Gardner getting ready in the bullpen. Pitching one and two. Ground ball hit down to third. Bobo by Kenny Boyer and Adolfo Phillips is on. The mayor turns to Ken Boyer. Now Bob Shaw will have his work cut out for him as the big hitters will be coming up here in the eighth inning with somebody on. The batter now is the second baseman Glenn Becker hitting 274. 
today he has grounded the short line to center and slide to right. And moving out of the on deck circle, right fielder Billy Williams. Now the stretch by Shaw. Here's his pitch. Curve outside. One ball and no strike. So this might very well be another cliffhanger. Let's have the infield straight away at double play depth. Foul ball back over the screen. No play. One ball, one strike. So far this year, the Mets have played 27 games decided by the margin of one run. He had the hitter badly fooled with a breaking ball, but he held up in time. It's outside, two balls and a strike. In the cliffhangers, the one-run ball games, the Mets have won 15, and the opposition has won 12. In the extra inning ball games, the Mets have won four, and the enemy has won three. Two-one delivery. Hit deep down the right field line, it may go foul, and a foul ball in the right field corner. Now Shaw has a two and two count on second baseman Glenn Becker. Becker stepping out for a moment to glance down toward the third base coach, Pete Reeser. The runner goes on a hit and run play. It's a base hit on a fast line drive down the right field line. Racing to third is Adolfo Phillips. Becker going to second. He's out at second. And in the score comes Adolfo Phillips. Phillips comes around to score. Becker tried to stretch the ball into a double, and he's thrown out by Al Luplo with Eddie Brasseau putting the tag on him. Mets had to make a decision as to whether or not to make the play on Becker coming into second or to pass that up and play at the plate. And since they were in front two to nothing, they elected to get the out at second. No RBI on the play. The run comes in to score on the play at second base. So it's a two to one ball game. The Cubs have broken through. That was an unusual play. Billy Williams up, takes outside ball one. Becker, a right hand hitter, hit a very soft line drive. It was almost like going in slow motion. Tantalizingly, just beyond the reach of Crane Pool, and when it hit in behind him, it almost rolled to a stop. Luplo had to come racing in from right field to get to it. Becker, who can run, tried to get into scoring position where he would have represented the tying run. Fastball for a strike. One and one on Billy Williams. Billy has bounced out twice and reached on a walk. Now a check swing and a foul ball out of play. New York 2, Chicago 1. A good one. We're in the eighth inning. One man away. Nobody on. Billy Williams, the hitter. And Ron Sano is on deck. Pitching 1 and 2. Inside curveball. Full foul past the Mets dugout. No play. Williams 
was a power hitter in the mid flame deep, both in the infield and the outfield, and swing the defense far around to right. The one-two delivery. A changeup is popped up, but will not be playable. Back into the crowd. Count stays at one ball and two strikes on Billy Williams. the ankles but he got out of the way of it so it's two balls and two strikes now Bob Shaw delivers two and two a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Shaw came with his fastball and fanned Billy Williams. For Bob Shaw, his fifth strike out of the game. So he takes care of a very difficult hitter and now contends with another in Ron Sano. Sano has slid deep to right, reached on a walk, and singled to center field. Each team has four hits in the game. the pitch to Sano, gets the inside corner, strike one call. Ron is hitting 310. Top of the eighth inning, two outs, nobody on, two to one New York. And a swing and a miss on a slider and the counter strike two. Ernie Banks dealing in the on deck circle, watching Bob Shaw. Timing a couple of swings. And now Sano wants the ball looked over by Mel Steiner. And Mel shows the ball to Ron Sano and then returns it to the mound to Bob Shaw. Here's the two-strike delivery. It's under the knees. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Whitey Lockman coaching on first, and Pete Reeves are coaching at third. Cubs have scored their first run of the game here in the eighth inning. Curve, he held up just in time, and it broke outside. Shaw thought he had him struck out. And Bob getting some support from the Mets fan. Sano started after it, but he had that good, strong bat control and held that swing up just in the nick of time. Now it's two and two on the Cubs third baseman. Down comes the two-two delivery. Curve, a high fly ball to right field. Loop low is coming in. He, he yells off Hiller and he makes the catch to side his out. So Bob Shaw did a good job of getting the two big hitters, Billy Williams and Ron Sano. The run will be unearned. One run, one hit, one error, and none left on. And at the end of seven and a half innings, it's the New York Mets two, the Chicago Cubs one. And now here's a word from Ryan Gold. We don't know the reason, we can't tell you why. For people like Ryan Gold, the beer exercise.
Ken Boyer will be up against Arnold Early. Smith's got a fine defensive play by Al Luplo to help them out. As the Cubs scored their run in the eighth inning, Al came charging in on a soft blue pit down the right field line by Becker. He made a wonderful throw. And they nailed Becker at second. When Bursu was toppled over in making the play at second, Phillips the speedster then broke and came down the line to score. Kenny Boyer looks it over his high ball one. Chicago in the ninth inning. We'll have Ernie Banks, Byron Brown, and Randy Hundley coming up against Bob Shaw. Foul ball, right straight back, no play. One ball, one strike. Early is pitching his second inning in relief. The 1 1 pitch. Ground ball hammered down to third. What a play by Sano. He spins around. He throws out at first. Ron Sano grabbed that one right off of his hip, going to his glove side. Spun completely around and then threw across to Ernie Banks and Boyer is out. One out and nobody on. Here's Eddie Bursu. Eddie has grounded out and has been on base twice with walks in this game. Pitch by Arnold Early is low outside, ball one. Tomorrow night, the Mets and the Giants at 8 p.m. and there are good reserved and box seats available. A well hit drive to left center, racing back is Adolfo Phillips. He can't reach it. It's over his head. Bounces against the fence. And then he goes into second base with a long double. For Eddie Bursu, his seventh double of the year, he hit that one over the head of Adolfo Phillips. It landed on the warning track and bounced up against the fence in left center. Well, the Mets would dearly love to bring him around for an insurance tally. Jerry Grody is the batter. Ferguson Jenkins is warming up again in the Chicago bullpen. Jerry has grounded out, struck out, and reached on a walk. Nothing for two. It's over at the knees. Strike one call. Sunday will be Banner Day here at Shea Stadium. All the banners go on parade and display between games with a doubleheader between the Mets and the Cardinals. Those Cardinals have been something else of late. They had a six-game win streak. They lost the ball game. Now they've won six more, and they're trying to make it seven. And they're ahead of the Dodgers, four to three, going to the last of the eighth inning. Joe Horner is now on in relief. Pitch on the way. It's in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Things have kind of fallen into place just right for St. Louis since Orlando Cepeda and Charlie Smith, who were both injured, returned to the lineup. The 1 1 pitch, outside and high, 2 and 1. is the on-deck hitter. We're in the last of the eighth inning. The Mets lead two to one. And a swing and a miss at a high hard one. It's two and two on Jerry Grody. This is Arnold Early's first appearance with the Chicago Cubs. He joined the Cubs yesterday here in New York.
A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Early stands Jerry Grody. Two men down. For Arnold Early, his second strikeout. And now the batter is Bob Shaw. Bob getting a nice end for his superb pitching. The White Sox have won the opener from the Yankees at Comiskey Park today, winning 4-1 to one on a five-hitter by Joe Orland. Fritz Peterson was the loser. No home runs in the game. The White Sox had four runs, seven hits, no errors. The Yankees, one run, five hits, no errors. Boston won a single game from Washington, 5-2. to two. Fastball is high. One ball, no strike. Hang Bowers, high flying Orioles from Baltimore are out in front of Minnesota, four to nothing after seven and a half. And they have their rookie right hander, Eddie Watt, on the mound. Watt has won seven and lost only two. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Eddie Watt opened the Eastern League season by pitching a no-hit ball game. He went on to add another no-hitter before the year was over. The 1-1 pitch. Missing outside, two balls and a strike. Let's have an insurance tally in the form of Ed Brasseau on second if they can pick him up. They're operating on the attack with two men down. Two balls and a strike on Bob Shaw. Inside, belt high, ball three, three and one. Bob has been on base twice today. He singled a right in the third inning. Check that he's been on base once. He popped up trying to move a runner in the fifth inning and hit into a force play in the sixth inning. Arnold Early with a three and one count on the Mets pitcher, Bob Shaw. And the pitch. A strike on the outside corner. Shaw bluffing that stride towards first base is brought back by Mel Steiner. Count three and two, and the pitch by the left-hander. A swing and a miss, he struck him out. So early in two innings of relief, have struck out three. Last of the eighth inning, no runs, one hit, a double by Ed Bursu. No errors, and one left on. Arnold Early, making his debut with the Cubs, worked two innings, allowed no runs, one hit. Walked two and struck out three, and will be going to the ninth inning. At the end of eight, the New York Mets two and the Chicago Cubs one. Willie Mays will be coming into a Shea Stadium tomorrow night with 529 career home runs. Willie now only five wallops behind old double X Jimmy Fox in the number two spot of the all-time home run derby. Good box and reserve seats available for all four games of the Giants series. Three night games, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, and Thursday afternoon. Now, before we go to the night, let's pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. At 810 on your radio dial, this is your Mets station in the great Northeast, WGY's Connectedy. Banks leading off in the top of the ninth inning with New York in front, two to one. Here's the windup by Shaw. Now the pitch. A smash on the ground, a short glove handed by Eddie Bursu. The peg to first, one out. Good play by Ed Bursu. That ball was nice across the ground. It was spike hard. 
Now Byron Brown, the left fielder. Byron Brown has singled the center, been called out, and been robbed of a hit by Ken Boyer. The windup and the pitch to Brown, and it's way outside. One ball and no strike. Shaw trying to win his ninth of the year. Down comes his pitch to Brown. A ground ball hits the first base bug. Grabbed by Train Pool. Shaw covering his out. Now there was a play for you by Eddie Train Pool. The right hander hit a ball right down the first baseline and actually hit the cushion. Well, when it hit the cushion, it took a crazy bounce away from Train Pool. And Eddie made a head first dive, and with his glove hand outstretched, he snagged it, and then had time to get up and flip the ball to Shaw, who came over to cover. Must have had some fine fielding in this ball game. Two outs, nobody on. The hitter is Randy Hunley, the Chicago catcher. He has lined to center, grounded out to second, and fouled out to Grody, who made quite a play. Swing and a miss on a curve, strike one. Bob Shaw into his windup. Down comes the pitch. Low outside, one ball and one strike on Randy Hundley. The one-one delivery, ground ball hit past the mound. It may go through and does for a base hit to center. The tying run is on as Randy Hundley singles to center. That will bring up the switch hitting shortstop, Don Kessinger. He has had six base hits in the three-game series. In the opening game of the series, Friday night, he had two bunt singles and a double to right center. And he had two hits in last night's game. In today's game, Kessinger has one for three. He's batting left against right-hander Bob Shaw. Here's the pitch on the way. Fastball over, strike one call. Each team has five hits in the game. Lee Thomas has come out of the on-deck circle to bat for Arnold Early. Here's the pitch on the way. A ground ball to third, knocked down by Boyer. He's up with it, throws, and the game is over. The Mets win it 2-1 on a five-hitter by right-hander Bob Shaw. In the ninth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Final score, the New York Mets 2 and the Chicago Cubs 1. And that's Mets Baseball for today, brought to you by Rheingold, New York City's largest selling beer. And what a remarkable thing that is. In New York, a city of so many different people with different tastes, one beer has become the favorite, Rheingold Extra Dry. They don't know why so many people like their beer, but they must be doing something right. Today's game was also brought to you by WGY, your sports station for the Great Northeast. WGY will bring you the full schedule of the Mets regular season game live from Major League Parks throughout the country. Be with us Monday at 7.55 when we'll present another exciting New York Mets baseball game over 8.10 on your radio dial. It's now 25 minutes until 5 o'clock, and now WGY joins the NBC radio network for Monitor. The program is in progress.